All right, guys, here are some of the ingredients for this evening's cook. We have ribeye steaks, we have asparagus and potatoes and peaches, and we have a few appetizers out here, French bread locally made. And we're also having some fun before we start the cook. Kids going crazy in the pool. We have a few guests here waiting for the steaks to be cooked. Everyone's hanging out, having a good time. And here we go. What you cooking? <laughs> steaks. I got yours right here. Thanks, babe. So today on the Architect Griddle, we're cooking asparagus, potatoes, onion steaks, and we have some peaches for later with some uh, vanilla ice cream. And uh, we haven't done a dessert yet on the griddle. This will be the first time. But right now we're throwing the steaks on the cooler side of the grill. It, I know it doesn't sound like it, but it really is the cooler side. So we're going to go ahead and uh, season each steak and we're going to press it in with our press, which is kind of new to the griddle. We're going to put plenty on it. So we're going to press press that seasoning in. It's cool, it works great for the burger. So we're gonna flip these guys, so we've seared each side. And these won't take long to cook at all. The cool thing about this meat is that we went to the local, uh, local supermarket where they have a local butcher, and he went ahead and cut off the ribeyes, the right thickness, for griddling. They had some on the shelf that were like an inch thick, three quarter inch thick. And I said, well, can you get us some good cuts that are a lot thinner, like five eighths? And he said, sure enough. So he did that and he came back with some great cuts of meat and they're the right thickness for griddling. So we're a little hot over here. It's, it's browning really quick. But uh, today, we kind of just threw these steaks on. But actually, I have a guest with me. Lil Dave is what we call him at the <laughs> office. And it was his idea to do a steak, and we kept calling it peach steaks all <laughs> week at the office. And it's not really not peach steaks, it's steaks with a peach dessert at the end, which will be kind of a surprise dessert, and I think you guys will really like it. But in the meantime, while these steaks are browning on the other side, we're gonna dump these potatoes to this side of the grill. And we're going to steam these guys. I hadn't cooked potatoes like this before, so we're going to give it a go. So we've been talking about what kind of format is, is this video going to be. And we were like, well, you know, we don't know. Dave's going to be here. We have a guest. What do we do? And really, we're going to do what we always do. We're going to talk about stuff. But one of the questions we had was, since you wanted to do the steak dish, when was the last time you cooked a steak? And how did you do it? Did you use peaches afterwards? And what did you put on the steak when you cooked it? Last time I cooked this was probably three weeks ago. And usually you do a typical, very typical original thing. Use the pink pepper sauce, Worcestershire, and uh, usually top it with rosemary and simply salt and pepper. Uh huh. But no, I didn't do any. Uh, I did use asparagus last time, but I did not do peaches. Okay. Last time we did the peaches, though, you top it with cinnamon and sugar at the end, a little bit of honey, and you let it caramelize, kind of create a crust, and then you, uh, at the end, as you're serving it, you top it with vanilla ice cream. Okay. It is kind of like a peach cobbler. That's cool. And I guess it picks up on some of the, the juices remaining on the grill. And the peaches are kind of flavored with the steak dish. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Anyway. But on the side, uh, I'll be seasoning the potatoes. Well, 
we just threw some salt on, pepper, and uh, we put a lot of butter, and a lot of butter makes everything good. So uh, that's how we did the potatoes this evening. You should cook it down with some butter. Yeah. Well, we may get some from the kitchen, but thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> what you do is you set it on the meat for three or four minutes and we're going to go through each one and let it press each and uh, it's extremely hot. This thing is burning hot and it's almost like you have a griddle on both sides of the steak at the moment. Uh, and I really want to sneeze so badly right now because I just breathed in all of the pepper. I sprinkled on the, on the potatoes. But uh, anyway, so we're going to try out this press on each steak, and you can see they're cooking very well. There's a few requests here. <laughs> so we're going to season both sides. This is a uh, McCormick Grill Mates Montreal Steak Season. You can get it at any grocery store. And uh, one of the things we try to do every time we grill on the architecture griddle is talk a little bit about design and how... Uh, I kind of have a theory that cooking is very similar to design. Architectural design, interior design, there's layers of information and they're put together in a certain way that creates a, a work of art. So as a creative, a creative person, since you're a Masters of Architecture graduate and have been doing artwork almost your entire life and now we're designing buildings together in, in homes, uh, would you say, how would you say cooking is similar to design? Well, design is very much a, uh, a plethora of, of ingredients, items that you find and put together in very different ways on every individual structure. And uh, it's your job to find out how those will go together in the best way possible. And cooking is very similar. I love to put on a record, listen to some music, and find out how I want to put those pieces and parts together to create the best product. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, like, I sometimes equate the cooking to, uh, like, and I think about architecture and layers and design and layers. So you may have a foundation and a structure, and then you have interior finishes, and you have the space and the color and everything else that's added to the space. But you also have, in cooking, you have a texture of the meat that has the seasoning, and then you have the potatoes, which have a texture different to the meat, but complementary. So we kind of think about it in a similar fashion, I believe. Asparagus on, we're going to steam that as well. And I have a, I have a dome, and we'll steam that one. Now we we're we are filming and being filmed at the same time. I suspect it's going all over Snapchat right now, but uh, it's always fun. So now we're steaming the asparagus and the potatoes to make sure they cook through and through, and we're grilling the steaks. If you zoom in close to one of these steaks, you'll see that they are very hot. The juices are flowing, and we're going to move the press again. It's okay if a potato's in there; we'll just smash that in with it. One thing we do want to do is use our onions. We're going to set an onion on every steak. Maybe two onions on every steak. Let's We have a guest with us. We like to ask some questions and kind of uh, get a take on their unique perspective. Ice cream. And uh, as one of the kids are running by asking for ice cream, uh, I want ice cream. Go jump in the pool. No. Uh, I want ice cream. Anyway. Wow. Good. One of the questions we would like to ask you is, well, how did you learn to cook? Well, growing up in a family of cooks, typical Cajun country, you know, uh, cooking gumbo every Sunday, having fish fries and things like that. Uh, everybody down here likes their seasoning. Everybody loves to cook, loves to be creative with it. And we have recipes that get passed down for generations. Well, it, it, it's funny because like in a lot of parts of the nation, guys aren't the people cooking. But down here in the deep south, we do a lot of cooking, everything from boiling crawfish to grilling. It's different, it's kind of a different kind of thing. But uh, anyway, so your family always kind of cooked, right? I remember you telling me stories about your mom always cooking for you and always having plenty of food, good food at that. Always had leftovers. 
Every Sunday, it looks like we cook for an army. <laughs> you get like three or four meals out of one cooking oh, yeah. session. Yeah. Every guy in the household was serving like three plates of food. <laughs> and you had leftovers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, around here, there are so many mouths at any one point in time between friends coming in and visiting or uh, all the kids around that we rarely have leftovers. If we do hibachi, we have a big vat of rice in a, <laughs> and you can just scoop it out and feed an army for three weeks. But uh, other than that, there's usually not leftovers. Um, right now I can smell this, other than the pepper I just inhaled, I can smell the meat cooking, it's amazing. And if you wanna take a peek, I'm gonna steam the asparagus again, and we're gonna go ahead and roll through those. What we need to do is put a little butter on that. Let me grab We'll put some butter on the asparagus, and we're gonna do the same thing for the potato. Just drop that in there. Hard to go wrong with butter. Okay, you see how the potatoes are starting to come apart? They're cooking. They're well cooked and only getting better. So when we cut the potatoes, I made sure I left a little bit of skin on each potato so that it kind of holds together as it cooks on the griddle. It's not like it's just one piece of starch floating out in the middle of the griddle. There is starch attached to some skin and that skin will give it the texture and some flavor in addition to the starchy potato body. Butter makes everything better. So the number one rule in the architect's griddle is there's no mistakes unless you burn it. And right now I just had someone yell to me that they want it not well done. So I'm gonna pull one of these steaks right now for a few people. Dave, how do you like your steak? Medium rare. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go with that right here. And then this one, we're gonna give, these are both gonna be medium rare. These are a little less cooked, but I think they're going to be all right. Check it out. The onion's doing nothing but giving it flavor. You can see the seasoning that we pressed into it. It's going to be amazing. Don't burn yourself as hot. Oh, yeah. Those are cooked perfect. There you go, Dave. He's living over on the cooler side of the griddle. We're going to bring him towards the center where it's hottest. And we're going to put the press on it. These steaks are, are varying from medium rare to medium. And that's what most people really like their steaks. Uh, I've yet to have many people say, I just want it rare and like really bloody. But I know there's some diehard steak eaters out there that would say you're, you're killing, you're ruining the dish if you do anything but rare. But uh, around here, they're wanting medium rare uh, to medium, and that's what we're doing. Let's go ahead with salt and pepper, the asparagus. That looks beautiful. And we're gonna put one shot of olive oil on it. I always like to do that with the asparagus. It kind of, I feel like it gives it a, a, a little more flavor or enhances the flavor of the asparagus. And I think we can pull these domes off. Let's go ahead and flip the potatoes, which are ready. Yeah, they're ready. Piping hot. You see it sticking to the grill a little bit. I'm gonna scrape that up so that goes into the dish with it. Oh, yes. You see how it's kind of falling apart and cooking down? That is what you want. Don't mind the asparagus, that's just extra flavor. That's a pretty looking dish. Steak is good by itself, but it's better with sides. So we're gonna pull these potatoes. They're well salted, well peppered, well buttered. Let's pull these. We're gonna scrape everything off the griddle with them. That's where all the flavor's at. Here's the asparagus and potato dish. Perfect sides for a, a perfectly cooked 
state. Look, this dish was suggested by Dave, and we're gonna go ahead and make it per his requirements. We're missing an ingredient or two, but we've made up for it with other ingredients, including the maple syrup, butter, and we do have some ground cinnamon on hand. And uh, so the point is, you take the griddle that you've been cooking steaks on, in that you scrape off the bulk of it, and then we, we throw on the butter, a uh, quarter stick, and we're going to let that kind of move around. We're going to spread the butter around, and then we're going to set our peaches on it. But Dave, what's the idea here? To cook it face down and let the uh, pretty much the flush of the peach cook to a certain point to where it has a crust. Okay. And then you can top it with your cinnamon and sugar or maple syrup to let it caramelize. Okay. And prepare it for your vanilla ice cream idea. Awesome. So if you come in here, you'll see that we're all over this butter with these peaches. And we're going to make sure the other peaches get some butter. And so we just want to cook it tender, like he says. And I, I believe this is a perfect compliment. The peaches aren't so sweet that they, they conflict with the meat and the potatoes and the asparagus, but they're a perfect healthy complement to the vanilla ice cream, as if that's, that could be the case. But uh, anyway, we have the cinnamon. We should throw this on, right? Not too much, otherwise everyone won't be able to eat it. And then we're gonna go ahead and drag a line of maple syrup across and across. <laughs> So there we go. I'm going to hit it with just a little bit of water to steam it some. It does smell good. That cinnamon is kicking. The butter is doing its job. And the grill is cooking these peaches through and through. So we took some peaches that weren't quite right, but we're making them right by caramelizing them and making them tender by cooking them. And uh, these are gonna be a side dish, an after dish, a dessert dish to go on top of the ice cream. So it's the first, it's the first here at the Architects Griddle. It's all in good fun. And I can see it's caramelizing right now. Each of them are still a little hard. I can feel them through the, through the spatula. We're gonna let them cook just a little bit more. <laughs> that smells so good. <laughs> That's a good idea. I would definitely put them to where all the, uh, the sides are going to Okay, okay. All right, so that it cooks. Yeah. It cooks through and through. Okay, I have some good cut ones. The, the issue here is that we cut these peaches before Dave showed up. He said, look, we're going to put peaches on the grill. I cut peaches up to go on the grill, and I realized when he got here that there's a certain way to cut these peaches up. So uh, anyway, I know now, next time, we're gonna cut them all in half and put the fruit side down with the skin side up. Okay, so you can't smell this, but if you could smell it, what you would smell is caramelizing peaches with butter and cinnamon. And yes, it is about 130 degrees right here at the grill. I'm sure my face is red and sweat's dripping down but it's all for a good cause. These people are gonna eat really well tonight. So we gotta steam these peaches because they're not quite ripe enough, but we're gonna steam them and get them real soft. Really, they could, should be falling apart, right Dave? Mm -hmm. Kind of falling apart? Falling off the skin. Okay, and so all the juices are flowing and you're scooping that onto the ice cream, and it all just makes this wonderful melted ice cream goodness <laughs> this is a taste test that we do on every video and the steaks came out pretty good i think we may go with a thicker cut next time but they were good but here is the peach and ice cream uh dish that we were shooting for and uh it's very good i'm gonna take a little bite of both mm -hmm. it's good is it everything you thought it would be Dave? Yes. And more. And more. <laughs> awesome.